Okay, so this is the lecture on advanced course in classical logic. And today we talk about the finite model theory. It is a branch of mathematical logic that studies finite models and uh, uh, the first order language or its extensions. Uh, and uh, we study the question, can we express properties of finite models in this language? Which properties are expressible? How this is related to computational complexity of this class of finite models uh, and so on. Uh, this topic is closely related to the theory of database systems, to the computational complexity, and even to the theory of formal languages. Okay, so in the usual, in the ordinary model theory, we study arbitrary models and arbitrary and the first order formulas. So we study two things, a language. In our case, this is a set of formulas and mostly we concentrate on uh, closed formulas or sentences. And on the other side, on the semantic side, the class of all models including finite and infinite models. So the domain of any model is any non-empty set. Uh, and the main bridge between the language and models is this truth relation between a model and a closed formula. A formula A is true in the model M. And there are some Elephants, elephants in this model theory. We have compactness theorem. If every finite subset of a set of formulas gamma is satisfiable, then the whole set is satisfiable. Uh, we have completeness. What does it mean? Uh, let us consider the set of all valid formulas, all formulas that are true in all models. Can we describe it in some nice way? The answer is yes. We can, we can write a decidable set of axioms such that they axiomatize all valid sentences uh, together with uh, some finite and very simple uh, rules of inference. We have two rules, modus ponens and generalization And as a consequence, we have that the set of all valid formulas, the set of laws of first order logic, the, the, the set of laws of all models, including the infinite models, is semi decidable. So there is an algorithm that takes a formula, and if this, for, the, the, this algorithm stops, if and only if, this formula is valid stops and uh, returns yes, for example, if the sentence is valid in, on all formulas, on all models, and it uh, works in infinitely long, if it is not a valid sentence. The question is, which of these results uh, can be transferred to the case of only finite models? And some uh, answers are surprising, are unexpected. Well, compactness fails, we already know this, because we can write as an infinite set of formulas. Each formula says there is at least n elements. There are at least n elements. So this is the exact formula. And we know that every finite subset of this set of formulas is satisfiable in the class of finite models. So there is a finite model for this delta. But the whole set gamma is not satisfiable in the class of finite models because it must have n elements for every n, at least n elements. What is more surprising is that uh, even completeness fails 
what does it mean here? Of course, we could write all valid formulas and say that they are our axioms. But uh, it turns out that the set of valid formulas is uh, not semi-decidable. It's not decidable and not semi-decidable even. So tracked and more theorem. If our signature is not very trivial, it contains at least one binary, binary predicate symbol. Then the set of laws, the set of valid formulas, valid in all finite models is undecidable. Uh, here we call a, a formula finitely valid if it is valid in all finite models. And this theorem only says that this set of finite, finite laws is undecidable, but we can say even more that this set is not semi-decidable. Why? Because uh, we can easily show that the complement of this set, the set of non laws is semi-decidable due to the following easy equivalence. A formula is, is not finitely valid if and only if its negation is finitely satisfiable. So there is a finite model for not B. And now the question is, can we check that some formula is finitely satisfiable? Can we build an algorithm such that it stops if and only if our formula has a finite model. So if it, if it has a finite model, the algorithm stops. If it doesn't have a finite model, the, the algorithm works infinitely long. Of course we can. We can uh, check all models of size one, all models of size two, size three, and so on. And for each model, we can check whether this formula is true. If we find some model, then we stop. If there is no such such a model, then our algorithm works infinitely long. And so, if the set of laws were semi-decidable, then its complement is also semi-decidable, and so the set of laws would be decidable, which is a contradiction, which contradicts to the tracted broad theorem. Therefore, we cannot uh, describe this set of laws by some decidable set of axioms. Because if we have a decidable set of axioms, then the set of theorems is always semi-decidable. And here it is not. <coughs> okay, the question is, are there any tools from the usual model theory that still work for the finite case? Uh, the the most notable example of a tool is uh, Edenfoid games. They still work because we uh, proved that games work for any two models. It doesn't matter whether they are finite or infinite. So recall that two models are elementary equivalent if they satisfy the same closed formulas. And, uh, in the lecture about games, we proved that two models are equivalent, elementary equivalent, if and only if the second player has a winning strategy in the corresponding game. And moreover, uh, we can write similar a similar theorem for only for formulas of quantifier rank at most n. Two formulas are equivalent only for formulas of quantifier rank at most n, if and only if the second player wins in the game that has only n rounds. A quantifier rank means that we count the uh, nesting depth, the depth of quantifiers. If we have one quantifier inside another quantifier and so on, n times, then the quantifier rank is n. So this is almost the only tool that survives from model theory to finite model theory. And it is uh, widely applicable 
uh, in the, the pilot model series. It is used, often used. Okay. Still, there are some nice results about finite models. Of course, there should be some properties for which finite models uh, behave nicely. Let us consider a finite signature. We have only finitely many predicate functional and constant symbols. And moreover, for simplicity, let us consider only a signature in which we have only relational symbols, including the equality. Uh, this is only for simplicity. We can do the same for functional symbols and constant symbols. Uh, it turns out that we can describe one finite model by a single formula. So every finite model can be described up to isomorphism, of course. Of course, we cannot distinguish two models that are isomorphic uh, by some formula, which means that for any model M, there is some formula AM such that for any other model, any model, not only finite, for any model, it is true. Uh, this formula is true in this model N, if and only if the, these two models are isomorphic. So there is a finite description of every finite model in the uh, finite signature, of course. If we have infinitely many symbols, of course, we cannot write a, a single uh, finite formula. Let us... Uh, practice in writing such a formula. Consider this This is a finite structure, a finite graph, in fact. So R is a binary relation. How can we describe it in the first order uh, language? So we write there is X, Y, and Z such that then we write a conjunction of the following formulas. Every point is equal to X or Y or Z. These two points are not equal to each other. And now we need to describe these edges, these arrows. For every edge in this graph, we write the corresponding conjunct, uh, R, X, Y, and so on. So C has a loop, so we write R, Z, Z. Z. And for every pair that is not that has no edge, we write the negation of this conjunct. So in total, we have four plus five, nine uh, conjuncts because, because we have three points and a, a binary relation, two to the power, three to the power two. And it is, one can easily show that for any model N, this formula, is true if and only if uh, these two models are isomorphic. And of course, this can be done for any finite uh, model over any finite signature. So, so for any model, there is a formula that describes our model up to isomorphism. So if our model has S elements, then we write there exists X1, XS, and then a conjunction of similar formulas these two, so any distinct variables are not equal. Every point coincides with one of our elements. And, and now we have uh, predicate relations of any arity. If P is uh, has N arguments, then for any tuple of N elements, if this tuple belongs to our property, then we write the corresponding conjunct. If this tuple doesn't have this property, we write the negation. So in total, these two lines will give us 
s to the power n conjunctions. And again, one can easily show that, well, of course, this formula is true on the model M and on any model that is isomorphic to M. And conversely, if uh, on any model N, our formula is true, then we can easily build an isomorphism. We have there is X1, XS. So in, in the model N, we have some elements, for example, B1, BS, such that the corresponding formula is true. And then the isomorphism is easy. A1 goes to B1, AS goes to BS. An easy exercise to show that this is indeed an isomorphism. Okay. And this gives us the first interesting result that every, the theory of a finite model is categorical, is even strongly categorical. So recall that a theory is a set of closed formulas or a set of sentences and then it is strongly categorical if any two models of this theory are isomorphic. So if we have two models in which our theory is true, then they are isomorphic. There is also the notion of categorical in some cardinality kappa, for example, uh, countably categorical or uncountably categorical and so on. But here we have strongly, which means that uh, we do not uh, bound any uh, cardinality of M and N. So M and N may be any, any models, finite, infinite, countable, and countable, and so on. And the consequence of this previous lemma is that the theory of any finite model is strongly categorical. This theory doesn't have any other models except for models that are isomorphic to M. Here we uh, prove it for a finite signature, but this result, the, the previous lemma doesn't hold for infinite uh, signatures. We cannot write a single formula if we have infinitely many symbols in our language. But this theorem holds even for infinite signatures. But uh, let us show it for finite and for infinite, it will be a task for listeners. But for finite, we already proved uh, everything. So our theory contains the formula AM because this formula is true on the model M. <coughs> But this formula is true only on models that are isomorphic to M. So on, even one formula from this theory is enough to define the class of models that are isomorphic to M. The question is, uh, so we can write this, uh, formula, uh, th this theorem as follows. If we have two models that have the same theory, then they are isomorphic. Of course, the converse also holds. Uh, this holds for any models at all. But uh, this equivalence holds for all finite models. The question is, does it hold for infinite models? Or we know some counter example. Do we have any infinite models that are not isomorphic, but still have the same laws. Well, I think, yes, we can consider theory of uh, natural numbers with, uh, equi with equivalence only so we can only say that two numbers are equal or not okay. and i think this uh, theory also has a model in of 
for example, continuum cardinality. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, yes, this is uh, the simplest, perhaps, example. So take any countable set, and uh, the signature has only equality. And the uncountable set, again, with equality. Of course, they, they have the same laws. It is an easy exercise. We give it for students, uh, usually. On any infinite set, the, the set of laws of the equality are the same. But of course, they are not uh, isomorphic because they have different cardinality. Uh, and of course, we can uh, even find examples with more uh, interesting signatures. For example, when we considered games, refoid games, I gave this task. We didn't consider it on the lecture, but I gave this task. So integers and integers plus integers. So two copies of integer numbers with this uh, order, linear order. They are not isomorphic, of course, but they satisfy the same laws. This can be shown by uh, applying games. The second player wins in this game, always win, has a winning strategy. Well, uh, perhaps this is easy from the cardinality argument. How many, so we have, uh, two models have the same theory. Do they necessarily have to be isomorphic? How many different theories are there? A theory is a set of formulas. So, so a subset of all formulas. There are continuum many subsets, continuum many theories. So here we have only continuum many distinct models. But of course, uh, models, uh, we don't have only continuum many non isomorphic models because models can be of any cardinality, of bigger and bigger and bigger cardinality. So, of course, there are much more non isomorphic models than non equivalent models. Okay. So, as I said, this theorem still holds for infinite signatures. I leave it as an exercise. Uh, so you can apply this theorem. So if you have infinitely many symbols, and uh, you consider, assume that this theory is not strongly categorical. So, so there is a model N in which we have the same laws as in the model M but they are not isomorphic. But between two, uh, this model N of course must be finite because in this theory we have uh, a sentence, there is exactly N elements. So this new model must have ex exactly the same number of elements, but then there are only finitely many possible uh, bijections, possible isomorphisms. And if none of them is a real isomorphism, then we have a contradiction. So you can reason like this. But details are left to the reader. Okay. The next question, which is principal to the usual model theory, is which classes of models can be described by uh, our formulas? By a single formula or by a set of formulas? For example, the set of groups can be, the class of groups can be defined by a single formula, the conjunction of three axioms of groups. The set, the class of algebraically closed fields can be described by an infinite set of formulas. So this structure must be a field and every polynomial has a root. It is an infinite set of formulas. Here, for finite models, we need to change this term. We will say that a class of models is axiomatizable if we can describe it by, a, by one formula or a set of formulas only within the class of all finite models. We're not interested in infinite models at all. So we will say simply that the class is axiomatizable, but we mean that 
we consider it within the class of all finite models. And the definition is the standard. There exists a set of sentences such that for every finite model, only finite, it belongs to K if and only if uh, it satisfies gamma. Because if we remove the word finite here, it will be meaningless. Because if we have many models, we can take the ultra product, it will be infinite. Uh, so it, it doesn't belong to K, but still satisfies gamma. So this is uh, meaningless. So only for finite models. Of course, isomorphic models satisfy the same laws. And therefore, if our class is defined by some set of formulas gamma, then it must be closed under this equivalence. So any axiomatizable class of, of models is isomorphic and under is closed under isomorphism. And of course, closed under elementary equivalence, but we know that on the class of finite models, they are the same. The uh, surprising fact is that this condition is not only necessary for axiomatizability, but necessary and sufficient. So any closed of any class of finite models closed under isomorphism is axiomatizable. So if we talk about axiomatizability by an infinite set of formulas, gamma, then any natural class, natural means that uh, it is closed under isomorphism. Usually in this uh, in, in, in model theory, it is called an abstract class. Abstract class is a class that closed under isomorphism. So any abstract class is axiomatizable. Compare this to our theorem that we already considered, Keisler's theorem, the criterion of axiomatizability of any models. So the class of any models here, not only finite, is axiomatizable if and only if it is closed under elementary equivalence and additionally ultra products. But now we don't have, we don't need ultra products. Of course, ultra products don't give us anything, uh, anything new on the uh, finite models. The ultra, if the ultra product of finite models is a finite model, then this new model is isomorphic to one of the previous models. This is an easy exercise. So ultra products do, do, don't give, give us anything new. But still, it is not trivial if we remove simply ultra products here that we obtain a criterion. Perhaps this would be some weaker condition. Is it enough? Is it uh, sufficient for axiomatizability? But yes, it is uh, sufficient. So uh, and this fact is not very difficult. But uh, be attentive. I, 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 first, I will give some proof that contains an error. So we have a class of finite models. Some of them are isomorphic, some are not. Let us, but they are finite models. So uh, up to isomorphism, we have either finitely many or countably many non-isomorphic models in our class K. Either finitely many or countably many because they are finite models. So this is a finite or a countable list of all pi pairwise non-isomorphic models. Now let us write this formula for every model M1, M2, M3. We write its characteristic formula, the description formula, and then put this junction. Of course, if our, for any model N, if it is in our class, then it is isomorphic to some of these models. And then of course, this form, this model satisfies our formula. Conversely, if our model satisfies this formula, this disjunction, then it, it satisfies one of the disjuncts. And so it is isomorphic to one of them of these models. And so it belongs to K because if mi is in k and they are isomorphic, then n is in k. 
Is this a correct proof? Where is the mistake? Uh, well, uh, I don't understand why we can write such a disjunction. Uh, do we consider that uh, our language is infinitary or? Yes, this is the problem. Here, the, the disjunction can be infinite. The, this list must be, may be infinite. And so, uh, of course, if we consider infinitary first order language, then this is uh, uh, okay. But for our language, this is not okay. But anyway, from this wrong proof, we can con conclude that any class of finite models can be described by a single formula, but in the language with infinitary disjunctions. So if we consider infinitary first order language, then even one formula is sufficient to describe any class, any class of models that is isomorph is closed under isomorphism. Well, let us correct our proof. So here were, uh, the formula intuitively says that a model must be either isomorphic to a zero or isomorphic to a one or and so on. Let us change the paradigm. We say that now we say that let us write a, uh, a formula or a set of formulas that says that our model is not isomorphic to any model uh, that is not in K. So for any model that is not in K, we write this formula. Of course, there are very many for, uh, models uh, that are not in K, finite models. So we mean M is a finite model and M is not in K. But there are uncountably many for, uh, models that are not in K. It is even a class of models, but still, this is a set of formulas because this is a formula and uh, so this is a set of formulas and let us show that this set of formulas indeed defines our class k so we need to show that in, for any model n it satisfies this formula this set of formulas if and only if it belongs to k we will show that this model does not satisfy gamma if and only if it is not in K. So, and does not satisfy gamma, which means that for some of these formulas, it doesn't satisfy this formula. For some model from not K, from the complement of K, and does not satisfy not A. So it satisfies A, M. And this means exactly that N is isomorphic to M. And so we have, uh, for some model not in K, N is isomorphic to M. The question is, can this model be in K? No, because if N is in K and these two models are isomorphic, then M must be in, in K. In other words, if K is the class K is closed under isomorphism, then this the complement of K is also closed under isomorphism. Therefore, we conclude that this model is not in K. So this is a simple proof that any class of models, any reasonable class of models is def definable, but by a set of formulas, not by a single formula. So the only meaningful question is, when a class of models is definable by a single formula. And this is very meaningful, for example, from the database theory. We have some database. And then we want to express some query. Give me all uh, models that satisfy a given property. But our query must be one formula, a single formula, not a set of formulas. So for example, uh, can we ask a query, is our graph uh, connected? 
is our graph uh, Hamiltonian. There is a cycle that, uh, so th there is a traverse of our graph. Is our graph, graph uh, two col colorable, three colorable? So can we color the, the vertices of our graph in two colors, in three colors, and so on, uh, such that two vertices that are connected by an edge have different color, and so on. So we want to find, can we express these properties in our finite first order language with one formula, not with a set. With the set, it is not interesting. So, and this is the answer. Uh, so we will consider finite axiomatizability. We will use the shorter term, definability. So a class of finite models is definable if there is a single formula A, such that for any model M, M is, uh, is in our class K, if and only if uh, it satisfies this formula A. The formula A is true in, our, in the model M. So which clusters are definable by a single formula? The answer is, it is definable if and only if, for some natural number, this class is closed under equivalence over formulas of rank N. Let us recall what is a rank, what is a, this equivalence. So the quantifier rank of a formula. If we have an atomic formula, it's quantifier rank is zero. For negation, so negation doesn't add anything. Conjunction, we take maximum. And if we have a quantifier for all and don't exist, of course, then we simply add one. For example, this formula has the quantifier rank three because we have the exist, inside it we have for all, and inside it we have exist. And here we have exist and for all, so we take maximum between them and obtain. So the quantifier rank is three. And now, between two models, we have an equivalence modular N if for every sentence of rank at most N, they are equivalent. The formula A is true in M if and only if it is true in N. So before we had only one equivalence for all, uh, over all sentences, and now we have many equivalences for every na natural number N. And we can take bigger and bigger number n, and in the limit we obtain the, our equivalence over all sentences. So now we can understand our theorem. So a class is definable if and only if it, this class is closed under some of these equivalences for some n. Of course, if it is closed under some equivalence for, for number n, then it is equi it is uh, closed under equivalence for n plus one, n plus two, and so on, because they are smaller and smaller and smaller. The equivalence, the equivalence classes are smaller and smaller. So if this equivalence class as a whole belongs to K, the whole class number n belongs to K, then uh, the class number n plus one, belongs to k and so on. So it is, one can easily show that if it is closed for some n, then it is closed for this n and, and n plus one, n plus two, and so on. Let us recall some fact about this equivalence. In the lecture on games, we had the following fact. There are only finitely many pairwise non-equivalent sentences of rank at most n. So, uh, so there are sentences non-equivalent, uh, uh, there are finitely many sentences that are non-equivalent, uh, that are, there are finitely many non-equivalent sentences. But what does it mean for models? Here we have equivalence on models. So, uh, imagine we have two equivalences, equivalence of sentences, 
two sentences are equivalents equivalent if uh, they are uh, they are true on the same form on the same models. This is equivalence of formulas. But here we have equivalence of models. How these two equivalences are related to each other? So uh, we know that the equivalence on formulas has what is called the finite rank. So in general, if we have some set D and some equivalence relation tilde, then we say that this equivalence relation is of finite index if there are finitely many non-equivalent elements in D. In other words, the quotient set D over tilde is a finite set. So there is a, there is a finite set of classes, of equivalence classes. Now, we know that the, there are finitely many non-equivalent formulas. So the equivalence between formulas is of finite index. The question is, this equivalence on models, is it of finite index? The answer is yes. And this holds for in, in, not only for this first order language, for the quantifier rank. This is a very general fact. I call it the finite index lemma. So in the very general setting, we have some language, we have some class of models, and we have two equivalences. Two models are equivalent over some language L. If they satisfy, these two models satisfy the same sentences from this L. This can be, this L can be first order language, uh, intuitionistic language, model language, and so on. Two formulas of our language L are M equivalent if they are true in the same models from this class M. And now the question is, if we uh, have the first equivalence of finite index and the second equivalent of finite index, are these two facts equivalent or, or, dif or distinct? The lemma says that they are simultaneously of finite index. And in fact, the proof is easier. If we have exactly n non-equivalent formulas in our language, then our models uh, have at most two to the power n non-equivalent models. Because if two models are equivalent on these formulas a1, a n, then they are equivalent for all formulas. And similarly, in, in the opposite direction, uh, it should be models here and formulas here, of course. I didn't change the second line. OK, so uh, from the lecture about games, we know that the equivalence n has a finite index. And then we conclude that uh, the equivalence between models is has a finite index too. So let us look at how to prove this main theory in model theory, in finite model theory. So if we have a finite class of models, then it is definable if and only if for some natural number n, this class is closed under equivalence modular n. One direction is, of course, easier. If the class k is defined by some formula A, this formula has some rank, n. Then of course this class is closed under this equivalence. Any two models that satisfy the same formulas of rank at most n as, uh, have the following property in model M, this formula is true, if and only if in the model N, this formula A is true. So they simultaneously belong to K or doesn't belong to K. So this is an 
easy exercise to write this one or two lines of equivalences. So the main problem is, of course, the converse implication. Just several steps, stages. First, let us take some model. So first, uh, forget about our class K and so on. Take any finite model. And consider all models that are n equivalent to it. Then, this class can be defined by, firstly, by an infinite set of formulas. Namely, we can take the theory of our model in our restricted language. All formulas of quantifier rank at most n, in which our formula, in which, uh, which are true in our model. So this is just by definition. Uh, this equivalence class cons consists of all models that are n equivalent to our model M. So these models have the same n theory as our model M. So this is what we write here. So every class, so every equivalence class can be defined uh, firstly by a theory. Later we will co uh, compress this to a single formula, of course. But there are if, uh, only finitely many non-equivalent formulas here. In the language LN of all formulas of rank at most N, there are finitely many non-equivalent formulas. And therefore, we can remove many formulas from this theory. So this theory is equivalent to some finite subset of this theory. And of course, we can then check, take the conjunction. It will be a gain of rank n at most n. So this means that every class, equivalence class, is definable by just one formula. We compressed this theory into a single formula. So here we write this in short. Every class, equivalence class for this particular number n is defined by just one formula of quantifier rank n. For any model m, it is n equivalent to m if and only if it satisfies this formula. Now we will use this fact. Let us remember our class k. So by, by our assumption, it is closed under n equivalence. So it consists of uh, whole equivalence classes. If some model belongs to K, then the whole equivalence class of this form belongs to K. So K consists of, K is the union of some equivalence classes. But how many classes, how many equivalence classes do we have? There are, in total, there are only finitely many equivalence classes of models. So uh, in particular, our class K has only finitely many, it is the union of finitely many equivalence classes. Some classes M of models MI, so I uh, is one and so on and some are up to K. But then one can easily show that our class is defined by the following finite disjunction. So for any model, uh, and here we have finitely many models. We put, we write this formula and then write uh, the disjunction. So you can easily show that a model satisfies this formula if and only if uh, it belongs to the class K. So the, the, these previous facts exactly show that this is the case. Okay, so this is the, uh, a proof, uh, some little details were uh, omitted, but they are simple. In particular, this theorem allows us to, to show that some properties are not expressible. But with this, we need some examples of models that are 
equivalent uh, for some language, uh, so model and some add, but they are they look differently. So consider two models. I should of course draw them. Uh, one is the cycle of two to the power k plus one elements. So we have just cycle. So the element number one. So we have element number one, two, three, and so on. And the edges are from one to two, from two to three, and so on. It is not transitive. So we have so each element can see the next element. This is the element, the model MK, and NK is the union of two cycles of the length two to the power k. These models look quite differently, but uh, using reinforced games, we can show that these two models satisfy this exactly the same formulas of quantifier rank at most k. And with, this is very useful fact. Two very different models satisfy the same formulas of this rank at most k. And as a consequence, we obtain that the following uh, properties of finite graphs are not definable by a single formula. Of course, we know that they are definable by a set of formulas, but this is not interesting for practice. Uh, we cannot define that a graph has a, an even number of vertices. And of course, we cannot define that the graph has an odd number of vertices. We cannot define that a graph is connected. There is a path between any two elements, a directed path, a non-directed path. Uh, in fact, both variations are not definable, but you need two uh, dis distinct uh, examples of models. Here we have an oriented cycle, and uh, you also need to consider non-oriented cycle and prove the same fact here. And two colorable graphs are not definable. Why? In our case, the model M has an odd number of elements and the model N has an even number of elements, but they are equivalent. This holds for any K. So the class of graphs that has an even number of elements uh, cannot be described by a formula because it is not closed under any equivalence a model k. Because for any k, we can find two models, one inside our class, the other one outside our class, but they are equivalent. Similarly, the, the model M, the cycle, is connected, and this is not connected. And similarly, the first graph is not too colorable. Too colorable means that we can assign two colors A and B to our uh, nodes, to our vertices, such that any two nodes that are related by an edge have different color. So the Second model is too colorable because uh, uh, there is a simple criterion for two colorability. A graph is too, is too colorable if and only if it has no cycles of odd length. But in our case, one model has a, a cycle of odd length and the other one doesn't. So even this simple fact, well, this fact is not simple. If the fact you you need to to find the winning strategy for the second player in the game with K rounds. It is not a very easy fact, but still uh, facts like this can be proved uh, for oriented cycles, for non-oriented cycles and so on, for linearly ordered sets. Of length K plus one and so on. Uh, okay, in conclusion, so we have 
a finite model theory, and it comes from various uh, branches of mathematical logic and uh, theory of algorithms, theory of databases, computational complexity, formal languages, descriptive complexity. Uh, descriptive complexity is uh, studies the question, can we describe some subset of a given set by a formula in a given language? Or can we describe some class of structures in some uh, specific language? For example, in the language of set theory or bounded set theory and so on. <laughs> there is a number of uh, books you can read if you are interested in further deta details what is what happens in the finite model theory. There are several uh, well-known books. And finally, finally, you can uh, find on YouTube uh, a video, a course of, in, of five lectures on finite model theory. And there is also a specific uh, sub-branch of finite model theory, algorithmic model theory, in which you have finite models of uh, cardinality one, two, three, and so on and so on. And the relations of these models, so the predicate symbols are interpreted as uh, decidable, some decidable properties. Okay, look, well, uh, details can be found in these videos. Okay, so this is, uh, all that I can say about this in this lecture, of course, this is a very big branch of science of model logic of mathematical logic. Okay, we can discuss some questions.